adverse effects on your feet, causing poor foot circulation and foot ulcers. If you are diabetic, you can find care at the Foot and Ankle Associates of North Carolina. If you or a loved one have foot ulcers, wounds that won't heal, or peripheral artery disease, you could be at risk of a stroke, heart attack, even foot or leg amputation. There's no need to take the risk. Make an appointment today at Foot and Ankle Associates of NC in Raleigh, Rocky Mount, Wilson, and Clayton. That's Foot and Ankle ASSOC.com. This is WRSV Elm City. Turn up! Choice FM. Choice FM is live at 5. Express. But it's like this is South got something to say. That's all I got to say. Ruben Blackwell and express yourself on Choice FM. Good evening, Rocky Mountain Raleigh. This is Ruben Blackwell with Choice FM the people station uh, i'm here to talk today to you a little bit while you're driving on your way from home i know you had a hard work you know wednesday is what hump day is that what everybody calls it hump day if you get past wednesday you know you're on your way to the weekend so uh, i want you to tune in with me if you're in raleigh lord have mercy i'm praying for you i know you on 440 or 540 or trying to get one of those arteries that are choked up Glenwood Avenue, Capitol Boulevard. I'm praying for you. Life in the triangle. You pay a price, don't you, to be in one of the hottest markets in the nation. You're paying a price to be in the research triangle, and I know it's worth it, uh, but Lord, I do not miss the traffic, but sometimes I, I got to get in the mix. Rocky Mount, talk to me, you know. Uh, it's the end of the workday or first shift workday. You know, we are a manufacturing town and community. So while some people um, are finishing up their regular work day, others are maybe about two hours in. So maybe it's time for your first break. Would love to talk to you. Uh, let me give you some numbers to call in and, and chat with me on. Uh, you can either call if you're in Rocky Mount, Ash County, um, Edgecombe County, and you're hearing uh, the station and, and my voice, you can call us at 252-937-7400. That is 252 252- 937-7400. You can also call if you're in Raleigh, Wake County, uh, driving through, or um, if the lines are so busy, you're just choking it up, you can't get through the 252 line, you can call 919-872-9210. 919-872-9210. There you go. 252-937-7400 and 919-872-9210. Want to give you a chance to get your pocketbook under your arm and uh, click open that door and whew, sigh of relief and turn on the radio. And instead of listening to jams right now, why don't we have some conversation? Let's perk up and have some conversation with me. Look, you know, I am really intrigued. You know, I'm, I'm one of those... Um, I, I enjoy TikTok and I enjoy uh, social media stuff. You know, I, I subscribe to a couple of news apps, and 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 seems like what's really high on hot on the internet. A couple of things is uh, this fight, the, the, the beefing between black comedians. It's sort of interesting, isn't it? I mean, um, and and when I hear the perspectives, and I don't know any of these guys. You know, um, all of them. You know, well, most of them are funny. Some of them. But but they try. Listen, I, I ain't mad at nobody's hustle. They're giving it a good shot. And and I hear um, some perspectives. I, I, I looked at most of the Cat Williams interview with um, at Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp. And um, I was really, uh, wow. I was like, wow, Cat knows some stuff. And, you know, he's cutting. And I tell you what, I don't know if I'm ready to be on the other side of that couch with him. Because <laughs> He he be slinging it, man. He be slinging the dirt, and I don't know how to handle that sometimes. But but he he came out really strong, uh, you know, related to several other comedians that that you know we know and love and look up to. And then uh, Monique came out um, after others responded to some of the things that he stated, and and Monique came out and said that um, you know she that he's a hundred percent correct. And that she's been dissed by Oprah and by Tyler Perry, and that she, you know, had a beef with Netflix because they wouldn't pay her 
what she was asking for and she she wasn't being compensated at the same rate that other comedians were both black and white and then she named a few people that she felt that you know she is better than on that stage and in her career and paid a price for uh but didn't pay prices in other ways so um you know i'm i just want to know what you think when i hear monique i was like wow that's really deep I hear Kat, wow, that's really deep. Then I hear the other comedians' responses to them. I was like, mm, they got something that they, that's, that's a good perspective. I never thought about it like that. And now everybody's sort of, you know, going around and around in circles. And and I was uh, looking at, at one uh, clip on TikTok about uh, one guy who was saying, well, man, he didn't mention my name. I need some airtime too. You know, what did I do? Why did I do something to you? Why can't you talk about me? I need some hits on the internet too. What do you think about that? You think um, you think everything Kat said was real? Do you trust him? Do you believe him? Do you, how do you feel about Monique? You know, do you think that she's uh, telling her her truth, but do you think her truth is accurate and, and is accurate? accurately applied, appropriately applied. You know, you believe what she says? Call in to me and talk to me and talk to everybody else. The number is 252-937-7400 or 919-872-9210. You know, um, I, I also am, am, am really, uh, wow, I'm trying to embrace and grasp what happened Sunday night with the Kansas City Chiefs you know, in the San Francisco 49ers. And the game was great. I mean, it was really a great game. I was really impressed by both quarterbacks. I can't say that, you know, I'm the guy that knows everything about plays and what they should have done and what they could have done and who they should have put in and who they didn't. I thought they were, it was a well-played game, a very strategic, a lot of energy. I did see some errors and mistakes, but I, I walked away feeling that that was a real Super Bowl game. You know, it, it held you to the to the last minute. You didn't know who was going to win. You saw the challenge. And what about that halftime show? What do you think about Usher? You know, he had the lineup now. You know, Usher is maybe like half a generation back from my time. You know, I'm, I'm the Shaka and the uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire generation. <laughs> so to some of y'all, I might be irrelevant. And I... My music is probably sampled with your hip hop friends, you know, but he had the lineup. But what about Jermaine Dupree? What in the world? What in the ham sandwich was that? I was sitting there, my wife and I were looking at TV and I was like, uh, what is that? Is that cool? Is that how people are dressing? You know, and I saw, I saw so many memes <laughs> on, on, uh, on the internet. Oh my gosh. On, on Instagram and, and TikTok, boy, they were wearing him out. And I really didn't know he was that short till he put them shorts on. I, I didn't know he was, which is nothing wrong. I mean, you are what you are. You can't decide how tall or how short you are. But Lord have mercy, you can decide if you're going to wear lace socks or not. Oh, wow. That was just sort of deep to me. What do you think about that? Um, Usher, you know, he he brought it to me. And 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 that um that that Jackson State University band, and I've been to Jackson State before, uh, to a great great place, wonderful energy, brilliant students and and engaged leadership, and in their credit to all HBCUs all over the country, I was really impressed and enthused about that. And you know, um, others have done that before. Beyonce, you know, she had a whole. Um, album built around that that uh, that that HBCU sound, and um, of course, you know, all of us uh, Greek folk really um, celebrated uh, the noops being out there with their canes and whatever. And I do say whatever respectfully. You know, I'm on the other side of 1911, so you know, I got an opinion. But but they did good. I'm just gonna say hats off to brothers of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, y'all did a good job and you represented yourselves well and I think you represented the spirit and the uh, work of the Divine Nine um, fraternities and sororities across the world very well. I was proud. I saw another stuff on, uh, you know, on, on Facebook and on um, TikTok and, and on Instagram about, you know, that was the blackity black black our Black History Month celebration of the Super Bowl. 
Andre Day. What about her? The Black National Anthem. And what about the clapback from Megyn Kelly and uh, Matt Gates and all the MAGA conservatives who said, we don't need a Black National Anthem. We already have a national anthem. There's no need for that. And I heard a wonderful dress down that Stephen A. Smith, my frat brother, gave back. He said, have you listened to verses two and three? If you think that's inclusive of everybody, we need our own national anthem because the national anthem is very exclusive from us. We love to sing that first that first stanza, but if you keep reading and keep singing, it makes you want to say, mm, I don't think this one is for me. So I uh, want to know what you think about that. 252-937-7400-919-872-9210. I know you're thinking about, you know, stopping off at the grocery store, picking up those groceries to fix your meal for your lady or figuring out uh, for your gentleman friend, if 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 you gonna do something for him, or he gonna take you out, or she gonna take you out, or are y'all going out with a group, or y'all just too tired, you gonna sit at home watch Netflix and eat some popcorn tonight? What you gonna do? Let us know. Tell us about it. Uh, include me in your agenda, please. I'm just gonna ask you if you're traveling on Wednesday evening. I do want you to call in and talk to me, and um, let's let's figure out how to get some inspiring conversation going on that that gets us a little bit of uh, leverage about uh, what we do in our lives and know that we're connected. You know, social media, I love it and I hate it. I, it's the both and. I, it's, you know, I, I run hot and I run cold with it. I love social media because, you know, it does connect us all across the world. Um, it's, and it's an equalizer if you can get access. If they're not telling you stuff on Facebook that you shouldn't post and then you read something, you know, 30 seconds later that has the opposite opinion of you and you see their opinion and say, well, why can't mine, you know, be off as well? So we're going to talk a little bit later on today about uh, social media and some of the conversations that are taking place in Congress. And I essentially want to know, do you think it's good or do you think it's negative? And, and, and how do you, if you're parents of, of young children, how do you monitor that? How do you um, educate your kids about how to use social media and how to uh, incorporate that in your way of living. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So I want you to think about that. Second thing, we're going to talk about are workers' rights. You know, so much going on uh, throughout the United States uh, related to our economy. I think last week I talked about um, economic violence that's always been targeted towards Black people in particular. And um, people of color in general, as, as populations have migrated to the United States and um, they're not of European descent. Um, they always get vilified and marginalized. Okay, uh, we're going to talk more. And I do see we have a caller on the line. Caller, welcome to Express Yourself. This is Ruben. What's your name? And tell us what you think. Yes. Can y'all hear me? I hear you. We hear you. Thank you for calling. Okay, You're my great. first caller. You're the, I, I wish I had a prize I, to give to you. <laughs> yes, I saw him like this brother Todd Muhammad calling from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Yes. Well, like my and, and I just, just thank you for calling. Yes, brother. and I just and I just want to say that whatever's on your mind, whatever you're focused on, whatever the topic is, it's going to be touched upon on the crowning event of Black History Month, which is Savings Day, February 25th. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be speaking, and his topic of discussion is going to be, what does Allah, the great Magdi, and the great Messiah have to say about the war in the Middle East? And anyone uh. who knows or has listened to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan knows that he will touch on Basically everything you're talking about tonight, and I'm excited to hear you back on the air, brother Ruben. And, <laughs> I, and uh, happy Black History Month, happy Savings Day, and all that good stuff. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much for calling in. You know we love the great minister. That man breaks it down, doesn't he? And he speaks truth to power no matter what is happening and no matter who sits on what side of the fence, he's going to tell you what he thinks. He's going to back it up with some knowledge, information, and some verified statistics. I know that 
I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Happy Black History Month, my brother, and happy Savior's Day to you. Thank you for being an inspiration in our community. We appreciate your hard work, man. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. You're my first caller back on the air. I want you to tell your friends and spread the word and tell them to call me and, and talk about what's on their mind, too. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. So that great information, and thank you, my brother, for um, for shifting that too. So that why don't we? Why, I'm going to add that to my top list. You know, why don't we talk about what's happening in in the Middle East? Where do you stand with Gaza and Israel? Um, does any of that offend you? Do you feel that Israel was justified? We're going to talk about that. That that's going to be um, another topic. I I can't wait to get into that. That that's going to be a good good subject to get into so let's add that to the list again the numbers to call in are 252-937-7400 and 919-872-9210 and thank you for reminding us all it is black history month you know sometimes i miss the um set aside time to discuss and talk about and think about and 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 thank god for our journey in this month that's because I live it every day, every month, and every season is Black History Month for me. Uh, but I, I do not want to escape the fact that this is an opportunity for people around the nation and the world to hear about uh, the great contributions that people have made, Black people have made through the rest. You know, there's nothing that we have done that was easy. Everything that we've done had a price to pay, and 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 we had um, some adversity to work through it. But I thank God for our perseverance, our inspiration, you know, our ability to tough it through. No matter what energy is brought to us, we bring the same energy and more back to it. And I believe we got the universe behind us and all of heaven, whatever your faith is. Or if you have no faith, you know, if you're a black person, your eyes open up you immediately are dealing with adversity. Uh, it's how you match it and how you deal with it that makes a difference in your life and in others around you. So if you want to give us a call, please feel free to do so, 252-937-7400 or 919-872-9210. Um, let's, let's sort of shift on to um, our, our first topic that we're going to talk about tonight. And, and let's let's talk about social media for a little bit. Um, I'm beyond the point. You see, if you if you look at me on um, on Facebook, and I and I have to figure out uh, to my great colleagues uh, Doc and my, my great colleagues Chuck about how to ask people to tune in and join with me on Facebook. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, what I just like to say, you know, my kids are not kids anymore. They're grown people. And, and, and my, um, my children, when they were growing up, you know, the challenge for uh, my wife and I, when we were raising our kids, was, you know, being on those doggone uh, video games, you know. And I remember <laughs> when uh, my son was probably about uh, 12 years old, you know. You know, bedtime is like 10 o'clock, at least in my household, for the for the kids, bedtime was like 10 o'clock after they got the, did the homework, ate their dinner, you know, got their baths, then it was bedtime. Well, I remember I woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning, and um, my son and daughter's rooms are across the hall from, from our bedroom, and I heard these noises and people talking, and I walked across the hall, opened up uh, my son's uh, <laughs> bedroom door, and he had headphones on, and he was going to town with those sticks or whatever you call it, you know, talking to people all over the world um, at two o'clock in the morning, which was a school day, school night, and, and I about hit the ceiling. And uh, we had to uh, revisit, you know, guidelines for appropriate usage of, of those games and when they, when you can play them and when you can't. Well, today, it's even eclipsed well beyond that. You know, if if, if you have a, a cell phone anywhere near you, iPad um, or, or, or what do you call these things, notebooks or whatever, kids come out of the womb almost today knowing how to work that stuff. And, and I really uh, feel for you young parents, you know, or you older parents 
who are, are raising up uh, kids now because they can navigate through that technology much, much faster, easier than we can. That's their whole reality in their world. And there is so much that they can see and hear and learn from that's positive. And there's an equal uh, temptation to venture down the dark side, you know, um, in the internet with people who do not have, uh, you know, good intentions. And, and, you know, you don't think about people, um, you know, for the most part, I, I think most people don't think that, you know, predators are existing on every corner, but truly they are, <laughs> you know, if you think about how you're getting all these spam, I'm getting another level of spam calls on my cell phone that's unbelievable. How do people get these numbers? And, and how do they have access to your lives? And if they can access you, they can access uh, your kids, they can access your elders. You know, my mom recently passed uh, a couple of months ago. And I remember um, the last year of her life, uh, she was 92 when she died on her way, not far away from her 93rd birthday. And, and she had a flip phone, <laughs> you know, and, and we kept it on purpose. You know, we kept her flip phone on purpose so that, you know, she wouldn't be able to, you know, be exposed to a whole bunch of crazy stuff. But crazy stuff found her on that phone. And I ended up having to take the phone because there's so many people who spend their lives um, thinking about creating ways to get your money, you know, or to get inside your drawers or to to do something to you without your permission or opinion, I mean, your permission or engagement. They just want your money. They want something from you to benefit themselves. And, and, and so you have to have guardrails. So if you're a young parent, what do you do? Call in and tell me, would you? Can you talk to us? What do you do as a, as a young mom or a young dad or a, a, a dad or a mom that's not so young and you live a little bit? What do you do to protect your children while at the same time, you know, you're able to um, see your, you know, um, the, the kids can see you model after you, not just do what you tell them to do. Okay, we got another caller on the line. Carmillas from Edgecombe County. Thank you for calling. Express yourself. So glad to hear you. Thank you for calling, man. Appreciate your call. Uh, uh, good evening. Glad to uh, hear you on the on, on the radio. I just Thank got out of Rocky Mountain Human Relations again. Commission meeting, so <laughs> I'm just tuning in. I caught the tail end. You were talking about the national anthem. Now, this is the way I stand when I go places. And they are playing or singing the national anthem. I know they ask you to stand up. They ask you to take mm -hmm. off your hat. I do none of that. None mm -hmm. of All that. All right. You hardcore. Sure you don't. keep your seat. I used to love you to hear them seat. sing it. Go ahead. What were you about I to said, say? I said, are you hardcore? You keep your seat. I keep my seat. Keep my head on and do what I do. And um, uh, when it's over, I used to love to hear people sing it. Mm -hmm. And you used to love to hear some of the recorded ones. But I just refuse any longer to accept it. It's time for folks to accept us as we accept them. So I refuse. Love that. Um, I just seen um, WITN um, at the uh, chamber, well, the Rocky Mountain City Council building. Um, matter of fact, I just spoke with her to find out what she was there for. And I can't mm -hmm. wait to see the story, all the people that she interviewed about um, um, what she was here to interview for, uh, uh, about, what she was uh, going to talk about. So um, I gave her my card, or, um, and I can't wait to see. And I gave us well, anyway, I'm just waiting to see uh, what they are here. Because, see, my thing is i seen the uh, WRL did a story, and, um, and I posted it. I don't care who you interview, but make mm -hmm. sure you interview people that's at the table. Uh, you're going to interview right. a pastor, interview a pastor that attends the meetings, committed at the whole meetings, and the uh, uh, regular monthly meetings. So I don't have a problem who they interview, but make sure you interview the folk that's at the meeting. And what, what chamber meeting is this, Carmelis? What meeting is this? Do you know? Uh, um, no. Uh, well, no, it wasn't a meeting. She was just getting some... Uh, you said she was doing a story on Loretta Braswell. Um, so oh, I, I got see, you. you know, I got what, you. What, how that going to come out? 
Um, um, I don't, okay. I, um, like I said, I just spoke to her. Matter of fact, she was on the, um, um, you know, on the phone and stuff. So I didn't get a chance to talk to her. But again, I saw where Deborah Ariel did a story, and um, about the about the crime. Now that was about the crime. So uh, right. again, like I said, I want to see them interview folks that's in attendance and attend to me regularly that um, can truly answer the questions from their perspective. I don't know what they would say, but at least right. well, uh, reach out to the well, people you that know, to me. Well, you know this, Camillus, you know, they're responding to press releases issued by the city. So uh, the people that the city are going to send them to are going to have the administration's point of view expressed unless the reporter is doing their homework, like you say, and, you know, watching what's been happening um, in council meetings or uh, talking to people in, in the larger community to put everything in context. So we, we, can, we can talk about that, too, if you want to. Up to you. We got four minutes to go to the commercial break, and I'm happy to spend that time with you unless we get another call. So um, Camilla's just called on. I think he might have dropped. Uh, so what he's saying, there's some, there are lots of things happening in Rocky Mount. You know, one of the things that motivated me to get back um, into the, the, the stream of talk radio, and thank you, Choice, for giving me that opportunity, is that um, in my community that I live in, in Rocky Mount, um, when I hear the perspectives of the folk who are on the air, and everybody has the right to have their own opinion. The opinions seem to me to all be coming from one direction and one side and one angle. So um, I'm just really excited that I'm able to at least give some balance to the, uh, and I call it propaganda that's being perpetuated um, in Rocky Mount that really covers the wonderful things that are taking place. And sometimes, you know, you hear things and what looks bad. Uh, really is good, and sometimes what what is being presented as good is toxic and deathly. <laughs> you know, so uh, this this show will be able to uh, discuss openly whatever your perspectives are. I'm certainly going to share mine with you, and um, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to have inspiring conversation. Uh, this is Ruben Blackwell. You know, I'm I'm back at you. You know, I've been in the community for a while. I uh, lived in Rocky Mount for 30 years, and Worked in Raleigh for 10 years before that. So I've been around the block a while or two in Baltimore several years before that. I'm a native North Carolinian. And, and I was one of those folks who left the state um, after college in Chapel Hill, went to Baltimore, worked uh, there for a number of years with uh, Citibank and came back home because the sound of the South was calling me back. And I never have regretted that decision. But it's a South that we got to fight for. And we got to create some new narrative and new opportunity. So I want you to help me build that here, build that momentum, and let's certainly keep the conversation going. And, and what I can't wait to hear is your perspective and your opinion. When you come back, when we come back from commercial break, we're going to come back talking about workers' rights. So many things happening across the country with fair wages and, and, and a workplace environment that's equitable for all. A movement taking place in Durham, a movement taking place in Rocky Mountain and other places. We got one more caller, though. Come on, caller. Welcome to Express Yourself. Miss O'Ree, welcome to Express Yourself. <laughs> so glad to hear you. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Blackwell. Good afternoon. I'm in... Yes, um, you, you have hear so me? many talents. I'm sorry. You go ahead and talk. I'm listening. Yes, I'm impressed with your, your many talents. And uh, I just had to call in and wish you a, a very, very happy Valentine's Day. Oh, and thank you. Thank you. And same to you. Same to you. I hope you get thank a big you. bouquet and, and wine and dine by your love tonight. Oh, we already took care of that this afternoon. All right now. <laughs> you said he already took care of that business. That that business been handled, right? <laughs> hello, hello. I was I was very impressed and very elated, and and I said, well, let me go to work. You know, keep it moving, cause you know this is beautiful. You know, after thirty something years, and you 
you get out of bed and get um, your breakfast prepared and flowers. It's just a beautiful Ooh. thing. That sounds like he trying to get you back where you came from. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for calling in. And uh, thank you for all that you do in our in our community, Rocky Mount. We appreciate you. And thank you for calling in tonight. And keep listening and spread the word. Uh, we we want to have good talk tonight, okay? Well, I did want to um, ask, is it appropriate to remind everyone that early voting begins tomorrow, February 15th? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Why don't you give us that breakdown, and after that, we're going to commercial break. Tell us, tell us about early voting and what the dates are and what we need to do to participate. Well, of course, you know, there's a lot of negative things going on in the society, so I'm encouraging everyone to know your candidates, study your candidates, and know who's making sense and who's taking us out of our proper places. Um, of course, you know, photo ID is required this year, so make sure you have um, appropriate identification. And there are resources that will help um, individuals who do not have their photo ID. So don't be discouraged if you don't have it um, during the early voting season. Um, and just um, check around to see where your local voting place may be because um, the, the usual places in most communities, however, um, don't be deterred if there's a slight adjustment. But um, tomorrow we start um, the process again, and I want everybody to wake up and wake their neighbors up and ask the people at the restaurants, have you voted? Um, all of these young people working at these fast food places, ask them have they voted because that could very well affect their future um, employment opportunity and wages um, if they get the right people in office. Thank you so much. And then can you give us the times, and at least in Rocky Mount, of when the polls are open? And let me check. You're challenging me to be more. Um, hold on. Well, I that's okay. Here. We can do some research. We can do some re You can call back in. You can do your research and call back in. Give me a call back. You know, I'm getting ready to um, do something, and I was just trying to make a quick call and, you know, congratulate you and commend well, you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, getting... I can do my homework, and, and I, I appreciate your call, and, and I thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for encouraging me, and thank you for letting our listeners know that they have an opportunity to express themselves. We're going to go to commercial break. Um, uh, Miss O'Ree, if it's okay with you and uh, you can get on with your evening and, oh, um, and, and uh, finish your part of Valentine's day, week, Valentine's day celebration. What about that? Thank you so much. Okay, doc, let's go to commercial break. We got to pay the bills y'all after the, Marshall will come back and have more good talk with Ruben Blackwell. Soul 92's, oh God, good gracious, I got to get out of Soul 92. It's not Soul 92, it's Choice FM 92.1. Express yourself with Ruben Blackwell 2.0. Let's do this. Choice FM is live at 5. Express. But it's like this is South got something to say, that's all I got to say. Ruben Blackwell and Express Yourself. On Choice FM. North Carolina requires ID to vote in 2024. Polls accept your North Carolina driver's license, U.S. passport, and NC voter ID. Photo ID from your county's board of elections, a college or university ID, or a state, local government, or charter school employee ID. Be ready for election season. For more information, go to safevotornc.org or ncblackalliance.com. The Universe Soul Circus is back in Raleigh. And Choice has the tickets. Listen to the DOC each day. Choice FM. It's the last stop on the love train with the OJ. Coming for the family reunion old school concert. Saturday, March 30th in the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She Ticketmaster.com. 
Master so you can be up close and personal. For a limited time, get discount tickets for 20% off. Saturday, March 30th in the Crown Coliseum in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Produced by Joe T Productions and VisionWorks Entertainment. The Love Hard Tour. Keisha Cole, Trey Song, Shaheen, and K. Michelle. You deserve a night of love. Friday, February 23rd at the Greensboro Coliseum. Tickets available at Ticketmaster. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. How would you like to get high-speed internet for your home for less than $2 a day? That's right. For about 50 bucks a month, you'll get lightning-fast internet. Are you paying less than 50 bucks a month right now for your internet? Then call Whole Home Connect right now for blazing fast internet at 50 bucks a month with no price increases, no hidden fees, no contracts, no upfront costs. No equipment fees. It's a great deal. And guess what? You can try it for 15 days. If you don't like it, you get your money back. But you're going to love it. And you're going to love the price. Internet for your home for 50 bucks a month. That's less than 2 bucks a day. Plus, no contracts, no upfront costs, no equipment fees. And our 15-day guarantee. Call now. 800-257-1638. 800-257-1638. 800-257-1638. That's 800-257-1638. Watts Chapel Missionary Baptist Church with Reverend Dr. Harry L. White Jr. Online at wattschapel.org and live this Sunday at 9.30 on Choice FM. Choice FM is live at 5. Fresh. But it's like this the South got something to say. That's all I got to say. Ruben Blackwell and Express Yourself on Choice FM. Good evening and welcome back to Choice FM. Express yourself. This is Ruben Blackwell. So glad that I'm back on the air with you guys. You know, I'm, I'm getting the, the dust and the cobweb shaking off of me and getting back into the saddle again. So glad to hear uh, that you're listening and excited about uh, having good conversation, good talk with you as you navigate your way home. I know if you in Raleigh, you ain't made it home yet. You just got out the car or got out your your for our job and getting in your car and navigating through. I heard y'all about to get high speed rail, so maybe we need to talk about that a little bit later, but we'd love to have good conversation with you. So please give me a call at 252-937-7400. If you're in Rocky Mount, if you're in the Triangle area, give a call at 919-872-9210. Uh, hey, we've had a great first 30 minutes so far. And listen, I want to thank the viewers who were engaging with us on I Love Choice FM via Facebook. So if you, you know, got your cell phone and you're sitting on the bus or you're at home chilling, waiting for something to happen, you know, log in and, and check us out and, and join with me. I'm sitting here in my office and uh, having a good time talking to you. I want to shout out to Stanley and Brenda. Stanley and Brenda, thank you for uh, watching uh, via Facebook. Where are you calling from? Would love to hear from you. Give us some comments in the chat if you would. Happy to give voice to your thoughts. And for all of you that are listening, you know, we're here to talk about whatever is important to you. I'm always going to see the conversation with some good stuff, you know, but I want you to turn up the heat a little bit. You know, thank you for the callers that have called in. We always reminded from the last caller that tomorrow is the first day of early voting uh, in Edgecombe County. Uh, the polls open uh, from 8 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And that's Thursday the 15th through March the 1st, 8 o'clock a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And then Saturday, February the 24th and March the 2nd, um, uh, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we only have two day, two Saturdays of early voting. Uh, the early voting locations in, in Rocky Mount are Fairview Department of Social Services if you live in Edgecombe County and uh, Braswell Library if you live in Nash County. You also can go if you live, and that's in Rocky Mount. If you live um, outside of Rocky Mount in Nash County, you'll go to the administration building uh, on Sunset Avenue in Nashville. If you are in Edgecombe County and you don't want to come into Rocky Mount, go to the um, Board of Elections office in the Department of Administration building in Tarboro at St. Andrews Street. There is no excuse 
uh, not to vote unless you just decide you don't want to vote. And if you don't want to vote, I want you to call in and tell us why you don't want to vote so we can have conversation. Um, voting is so important to me, my perspective is that um, if it wasn't important, we wouldn't have so many people trying to take it, take that right away from us. And remember, the General Assembly has passed a law in North Carolina and, and the, uh, the state Supreme Court, uh, the GOP heavy state Supreme Court has um, affirmed and supported the General Assembly's uh, perspective that uh, this is time that, that voting, that elections require uh, photo IDs. So if you have not registered to vote yet and you are 18 and you are eligible to vote, you don't have any outstanding felonies uh, with um, restitution that has been unpaid, or you have served your time, paid your restitution, then you are eligible to vote. And you can take your voter ID along with proof of that if you are a returning citizen um, to uh, the early polling sites and with evidence of where your physical address is. And uh, that's oftentimes a, a phone bill, a utility bill, or some, you know, whatever you have that can say, you know, this person lives at this address and, and, and I have established residency. If you're already registered to vote, all you gotta do is bring your voter ID to the early voting sites. Now this is until March the 5th. On March the 5th, which is the last day to vote, you've got to uh, go directly to uh, your precinct uh, location and vote in your precinct. And that is according to the physical location of where you live. Don't forget to give us a call at 252-937-7400 or 919-872-9210. And you'll be able to talk right with me. And I'm Reuben Blackwell. Would love to chat with you. Uh, this evening as we talk about things that are important uh, to us. And I told you last week, um, you know, my interest, my concern is for America in general, the world in general, but I have a particular emphasis and focus on black people and other populations of color, primarily black people, because I don't know anybody else that endured slavery. So um, folks, want to just say, you know, why are we still talking about slavery? You know, why is slavery so important? You know, that happened so many years ago, and we should be able to move on from there. And, you know, you know, we really should be able to move on from there. And that is, if slavery was over the day it was over, it really was over, then we wouldn't have anything to talk about today because we'd all be able to have, you know, dusted off, you know, the, the pains and the trauma and the, the, the horrors that we went through for 270 years, I believe, you know, through the Middle Passage and and, 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 and the uh, forced labor and the brutality of enduring servitude that was violent. I don't know, some people love to have this um, nostalgic review about how kind masters were to their slaves. That is a bunch of blankety, blankety, blankety boot. So, uh, <laughs> so any rate, um, you know, what happened after slavery, institutions were created to keep people, um, you know, in servitude. And that's where uh, the banking system, the education system, uh, the, the housing, real estate system, the governments, there were systems that were put in place to continue uh, this oppression that really was about uh, economic wealth creation for a few. We got another caller on the line. Caller, welcome to, exp to Express Yourself. You're on the air. How's it going? I'm not Ruben. How's it going today? Hey, uh, Councilman. How's it going, my, my friend? This is uh, oh, is is this Brother Jones? Jones. Yeah. Calling um, calling from calling in from Warner Rapids, North Carolina. Listen to you, listen to you on the radio today. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. Thank I'm you so good. much for calling in and, and talking to us, talking to me and talking yeah. to us this evening. Thank you for calling. Yeah, What's on your mind tonight? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just want to express a little bit about 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 my department and environmental services and um what we're trying to do. I've been I've been trying to do and advocate for the city and, and most of the citizens in Rocky Mount um is trying to keep yes. this, this fight going for better wages for my department. Um and get a, a fair wage. We're still looking for that fair wage. And um um just to just like I say it's, it's tough out here on 
a lot of people, um, the economy wise, we just trying to get our fair shake. You know, I know a lot of stuff is going on in, in the city, and um, and I know a lot of people haven't seen me around or expressing myself, but I just in my spirit, just to talk, just briefly. Um, you're just trying to keep things in a focused type of atmosphere, and I'm hoping yes. for a greater good. And some will come out of negotiations whenever that time comes. But um, I'm still an advocate for justice and for workers within the city and public within, within all city employees that's similar to going through what I'm going through and just trying to fight for what's right. You know, it's trying to, trying to do things on a positive note and keep my head above water, you know, and, and, and fight a good fight, you know. Um, and things, um, things ain't always easy, you know, being on a platform that I am. But I'm going to keep fighting for the people in my department and the people of Rocky Mountain in general just to, you know, just to fight for it, you know, just to give, give, a, give a positive note. Um, we, we work hard. And the city knows, and, and the city residents know that we work hard for what we do, you know. And I've been I've been working almost 20 years with the city, um, and I love my job. I love what I did for the city, and and the people love what I did for the city, you know. Um, it's just a personal relationship with the people I see every day. Um, I I fought for, and it's been a few years I've been fighting for this. Just to have solidarity of just showing us just a little respect as far as far as pay what pay wise and, and, and pay rating um on my counterparts. You know, I'm I'm still fighting for them. I'm I'm gonna keep fighting for what's right, you know, within the city. And struggle. But I'm I'm struggling. I just wanna speak briefly on what what I think in my mind to a certain degree. Um just just to, um Things would, would get better. I'm hoping things will get better with us as a whole, as a people, as a whole, as a community. Um, we fight together. You know, I didn't do that. I didn't start this to, to, to sit back. I did this for everyone. When I speak out, I speak with what's right. My grandmother, my grandfather, I call mm-hmm. them a long lineage of proud black people. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Brother Jones. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, tell that story in a few in a few moments. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate you, and thank you for your thank you for your sacrifice. That was uh, uh, Brother Arnie Jones. Brother Jones um, uh, was a 20 year uh, worker with the City of Rocky Mount. He was a sanit- drove a sanitation truck 20 years and uh, served our community well. Uh, about a year ago, uh, the city of Rocky Mount um, hired a, a new city manager, and the manager came in after about 30 days and decided uh, that, you know, the challenges of recruitment for uh, law enforcement officers for the Rocky Mount Police Department was really lagging. Uh, our police chief had, had been um, talking with the council, and I am a med- member of the Rocky, Rocky Mount City Council, and he talking with us other uh, city managers to Mr. Rogers coming and had had, uh, had issues about, uh, you know, not being paid well enough. Well, our manager came in after 30 days. Um, he determined that we needed to uh, increase the base pay for new uh, officers uh, about 37 percent and it took up the base pay whatever it was prior to I guess it was in the 40s or something 40,000 something um, it increased it to sixty thousand dollars as an entry-level salary to become a police uh, officer with the city of Rocky Mount of course you got to go through different you know trainings and programs or whatever but uh, once um, you make it through all of that and if you check out all the the boxes then your pay is sixty thousand dollars and he did that in one fell swoop and he did it uh, with the permission of the council but now I won't say not with the full engagement um, when he made that announcement of course other departments within City Hall heard about it and then um, at the next council meeting uh, the fire department showed up in full force and they showed up in all of their uniforms and, and stood 
you know, looking very proud the way they do. And, and I have to say that City of Rocky Mount workers um, are dedicated for the most part. I mean, you have a few people like in any job who are not engaged, but the City of Rocky Mount workers um, love their job and love our city. And uh, the fire department said, well, we want to raise two. And so, um, you know, within another 30 days, that department received um, approximately a 25% increase, a uh, 27% increase, I think, uh, for, for entry level workers. And again, I don't know um, if all of salaries were increased or enhanced across the board because as of this day, the city council has not received detailed information about um, who has received what and where the raises went. It just was an edict that was passed by the manager. Um, so the next council meeting um, after the, the sanitation and public works employees saw about the massive increase that the, um, the, the, the uh, police department had received and the fire department had received, the public workers came out in force and they showed up in force and they said, we want a 25% increase too. Well, they weren't treated with the same level of consideration that the other two departments were were and uh, Arnie Jones was the spokesperson uh, that that um, you know led that effort with the city um, ultimately mr. Jones was fired um, the telegram uh, did a public records request about uh, why he was fired and the city issued this report that uh, really portrayed mr. Jones in a very negative fashion much more to follow about that later and maybe we'll just spend some time in another show and deep dive. But let's tie and connect that though to really the movement in North Carolina with uh, workers in every um, city and town that are saying, um, not just in public arenas, but also private arenas that are saying, hey, if we work hard and we're producing benefit for you, we expect to be treated the same or equitably, at least in our paycheck. And so in Durham, the public works and, and the sanitation workers um, department raised themselves up and they, they, they managed and they negotiated uh, with the city council and the city council in Durham took a very different approach to uh, worker increase in raises than the city council in Rocky Mount. City council in Durham um, and the newly elected mayor, uh, Leonardo Williams, said, hey, we value our employees. The city manager, Wanda Durham, um, they said, we value our employees and we know that cost of living is really high. You know, and if you work in the city of Durham, it's hard to uh, be able to afford to, to live in Durham. Even though you serve Durham, you keep Durham clean. You know, we see the same thing happen in the, in the Durham County public school system. You know, uh, gosh, they have shut the whole school system down uh, with um, an era, uh, an accounting error that was made that gave people more raise than uh, they were intended to get. And then uh, uh, an a, a email, a letter went out saying, hey, we got to claw that back. And 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 so now, uh, you know, we're in a dilemma and a situation. So this is a relevant conversation that's happening really throughout North Carolina. And I believe we have a caller on the line, Mr. Treyas Good from Durham. Uh, Treyas, welcome to Express Yourself. You're on the air. Oh, well, hello there. How are you? <laughs> hey, my friend. How you doing? How you doing? I am uh, upright and vertical, so it's a good day. I got you. I got you. So it's a good day. Indeed it is. Talk, talk, talk to us, Atreus. Tell us what's on your mind. Uh, you know, so, um, so I stay in Durham, and I've been having a difficult time navigating through everything that's been happening, um, primarily because uh, there, there are two things that are happening. Um, it, it's difficult to walk back pay and benefits and things that have been promised but i think that what, what we have to remember is that um there are children that are in the midst of this that are still needing to learn to grow to thrive and i, I feel like right now they are casualties uh in the space of 
what I think is a political conversation. And so uh, what I want to talk about is Leandro, which is something that um, legally um, mandates the General Assembly to make sure that all young people have access to a sound, basic education. That's what's on my mind. Okay. We got we got a few minutes. I, my, my show ends in about five or six minutes. But, hey, I'll give you that time. Let's talk until until I can't talk no more. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I guess with, with, with Leandro, I think with what's been happening with the school shutdowns and closures, um, it's primarily been led by a local uh, political action committee that um, I believe should know the limits of the district, that the district can't tax, and also the county is not on the hook for the money that's been promised. And with Leandro specifically in Durham, um, that's seventy million dollars that could be used to make sure that teachers are paid, that you have the benefits, but also wraparound services for young people. Uh, all the things could be taken care of, and so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what are the ways that we can have uh, and refocus the conversation on Leandro, uh, because this is not just a Durham issue. I think across North Carolina, uh, public yes. schools have been under attack, and so we have to be very clear about that. Absolutely. In fact, um, the original litigants for Leandro were in Halifax County and um, in several other schools and rural communities. And and the lack of funding that the General Assembly has continued for years. Has it been a decade, um, Atreus? Has, uh, has it been that long? That Has it indeed. been longer than that? Indeed. So, so we're talking about we're talking about money that's sitting there. Let, let's let's set the record straight. The money is there. The state of North Carolina has money. The state of North Carolina has fund balance. We've been a very responsible, fiscally responsible state as far as managing budget. But part of the reason we've been fiscally responsible is that we have not taxed corporations. We have. Um, overtaxed, you know, citizens through fees and other ways of getting funding. And uh, we have bankrolled these these fund balances, and we haven't put them in places where the money really needs to go. And the school system is the cornerstone, the bed, the bedrock of everything that's good in a state. And and we're all challenged and in, in trying to figure out how to manage the dollars that are coming. And and I, I tell you, that's that's a strategy of uh, folks in power. So, Atreus, we got a minute. Can you give us a your perspective about what a p potential solution would be to uh, some of the strife you got? I know that's a minute. That's not unfair. That's not fair. <laughs> but can you <laughs> give us what your your top your top thoughts are about how we can um, you know go down this road successfully? Yeah, I think we need to we need to organize and and talk to the General Assembly about what does it take to make sure that the Leandro plan uh, moves forward. Again, that that's seventy million dollars that would go to Durham, and that's over a thirty percent budget increase. So we talk, we talk about the pay that's due. We can do that. We can add teacher assistance. We can do community school coordinators. Uh, we can add mental health supports. All the things that we say that we care about. Uh, we can do, and I think at the end of the day, we need to keep focused on what's most important, which are our children. And I think that everybody should should agree that young people need to have access to the resources, the tools, all the things to, to live a life that they can be proud of, and we need to do that right now in Durham. Very well spoken. That was Atreus Good from Durham. He is a candidate for a school board for Durham County School System. And I think Atreus is saying, take the energy to the General Assembly, uh, bring that same energy. And we're gonna talk a little later, another show with Reverend Barber about how that can happen. Well, we have had a wonderful hour of conversation with all of you. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to everyone who called in. My name is Ruben Blackwell, and I'm gonna wrap up for this week's edition of Choice 92 uh, FM.1, the People's Choice Station. Ruben Blackwell, express yourself. Talk to you next Wednesday. Don't forget to tune in and listen. Have a great day. FM is live at five. Express. Like this is South, got something to say. That's all I got to say. Ruben Blackwell, and express yourself.
on Choice FM. This is WRSV Elm City. Turn up. Choice FM. Girls in my crib. Zero Snapchat, zero Instagram, boo. Sing. 